Welcome to another Thought for the Day from the Lady Grove Church. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're abiding by the government's latest instructions of not going out unless it's really, really vital and necessary. I wonder if you ever get to it where maybe you've read a Bible passage or you've listened to a Bible passage being read and then you... Um, you turn to maybe some sort of devotional notes about that passage and read them and think, nope, that's not what it's, what's, um, it's saying to me. Happens regularly to me, perhaps it happens to you when I'm preaching, I don't know. But it's happened to me this morning. The passage I'm about to read was the, the reading for today in, in the um, notes that I use, but it said something else. Anyway, it's Colossians chapter 1, starting to read at verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I remember reading once that C.S. Lewis told us that we ought to be, each of us, like little Jesuses. And as we go about our daily lives, we are sort of reflecting the love and grace and mercy that Jesus shared with those he encountered. And as I read this this morning, this passage from Colossians, it struck me that not only are we to be like little Jesuses, but we are to be also like little Pauls. Paul didn't have the joys of phones or Facebook or Messenger or WhatsApp or any of those things. He had to rely so much on receiving reports about how different churches were doing and therefore then had to respond writing to them and encouraging them. Normally we can meet on a Sunday. Normally we can bump into each other in the streets or in the shops and just find out how we're doing. We can Facebook each other, or well, we still can do that now. But certainly with this closure of, of, of life because of this virus, our physical contact with one another is being brought down to almost zilch. And so we need to use forms of communication, not so much letters, well, can still use letters, but obviously the stuff that the IT provides these days to communicate with one another. The interesting thing for me is that Paul never went to Colossae. He never visited these people. He just simply received this message about how they were doing and felt he needed to write back. And just think what those words say. Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. And he says that he continually asks God to fill these people with knowledge of his God's will through wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. He had never met them, but he cared for them enough to pray that God would help them grow in their understanding of his love and grace for them. We obviously do know each other, or certainly I imagine most of the people watching this YouTube link know me and probably know one another. But this is really saying to us, that we ought to show concern for one another by praying for each other daily, 
praying that we might grow. And it just strikes me that as we can't come face to face with each other, while we are cut off from each other, then we possibly have more opportunity just to spend some time thinking about our church family and asking for God's grace and protection and strengthening. So how about it? While we're locked away in our houses, perhaps if we've got a church directory we can look at that. Perhaps we can go onto our Facebook page and, and look at the members listed there. And let's just spend a little time praying for each one of us that we might be strengthened, that we might have the endurance and patience to work our way through the challenges that the coronavirus has brought. So that when we come together, when this is all ended, our next Sunday can be a time of sharing, sharing of how we have grown, how we have new, fresh insight into what being church is and what life is. Let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you. We thank you for Paul's letters. Thank you for the encouragement that they gave those early Christians spread out in, the, in Europe and in the Holy Land in those days. And thank you that they still bring encouragement to us today as we can read them and, and see how they relate to our lives in the 21st century. And Lord, thank you for that picture we get of this humble man wandering around preaching, but also really praying earnestly for people who he just had never met and maybe would never meet. But that he showed that love for each one of them. Lord, can we, can we learn from that? Lord, may you inspire each one of us to to grow in our love for one another so that we too will spend more time praying for each other particularly in this time of challenge but throughout the rest of our lives on this earth that we would simply think about one another and lift each other up to you that we may ask for your strength and your endurance and patience as we face the challenges of life. And thank you, Lord, that you are a God, ready and willing to all hear to all our prayers. May we never take that for granted. May we come to you daily, hourly, with our needs and our concerns for this world. And today we've been asked particularly to pray for the Didcot Food Bank as it tries to work out how it is to respond to the Prime Minister's latest instructions. We pray for each of the volunteers. We pray that they would receive enough food to give out to those in need. And we pray for wisdom as they work out how to do this two metres separation. And Lord, having chatted with staff at Sophia today as well, we just Pray for your blessing upon them, Lord. We, we thank you for the, the, the good news that so many cafes and restaurants who are being required to shut up shop for the moment are not wasting their food but are giving it to Sophia for distribution. But we also recognise that that brings extra work for the staff there and they're working much longer hours than normal. So we just pray for your strength for each one of them and pray for your protection that they won't get too tired and won't succumb to, to any illnesses. And Lord, we just pray for, we pray for this world at this time. We pray for wisdom for the government in this country and all those in authority across the world, that the decisions that they will make will be ones that are guided by your compassion and your concern for people. That they would think about reducing or restricting the level of illness and death and put that before desires to, to make money or to make sure the economy doesn't dip. Lord, we, we just pray that 
you would help them. And we pray again for all those at the front line, the medical staff, as they risk life and limb to care for other people. We pray that they would get all the resources that they need. And we pray for the uh, teachers who are going into work to provide care for children so that others at the front line can go into work. We pray for strength and, and protection for them. And we pray for all the suppliers of food and those who grow it, those who deliver it, those who stack shelves, that you would help them. May they know your presence with them at this time. And for our shoppers, Lord, we pray that you would give us common sense and a desire to support one another when we go into shops, Lord, may we only take what we need and ensure that we leave food and supplies for others. Lord, may this be a real learning experience where we can learn what it means to be community. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And let's close with the Lord's Prayer as we say, Our Father in Heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, I hope to see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, please do take care and please remember to stay indoors unless you really, really have to go out. God bless.